In this presentation, we will begin the design of our luxury kitchen and our mega mansion. This room is empty. Then we have a basic cabinet group. Then you see how the model will look eventually, plus the rendering that we're going to get to. And then we'll go back to that blank space and start going back to our model here where we've begun our kitchen. You, you'll see that there is an upper cabinet that we've started. There's a refrigerator cabinet there at the back. We have a couple of islands. The base cabinets are there and I know where my appliances will go. The first thing though that I really want to get going here, which is kind of the funnest part of this kitchen design, is a detailed ceiling with a groin vault. So the first thing we do to create a groin vault is create a barrel vault, which is what you see here. That barrel vault, we then group and make another copy of it and then rotate that 90 degrees. I'm going to take that as another barrel vault that will intersect with the ones we just drew. Then I want to squeeze that down because I want three equal parts of this cross barrel vault going the other direction. So I've done that, I make another one, and then I divide by two and I get three of these. Then I go in here, resize them to fit where they belong, and I have the form to begin to make this barrel groin vaulted ceiling. So I'll grab all of those, I explode that, and then I intersect their faces. What I've done here is I've created the forms that I need, and it's a matter of subtraction. You take out that lower plane, you come in here and just eliminate the pieces that you don't want. You're trying to have a barrel vault intersected by three other barrel vaults, and that produces a groin vault. You can see here, it's really pretty simple. You go in, you eliminate those pieces, and voila, you have a groin vaulted ceiling. Kind of wonderful. Then we're going to group that and keep that together as one unit. And then we can go back to the edges of this. Now I've left some space around here because what you want to do is have your barrel vaulted ceiling be symmetrical to the room. So I've created a flat part that surrounds it. And then I go back, get that plane in that needs to be there for that part of the ceiling, and reverse the faces so that it's also white. And then there you have it. You have a ceiling for that space. Now, we can go back to our room here where we've started our cabinets. And what th this end that's closest to us here is where there will be a doorway, an archway that will open to another room. So I'm going to set those with guide uh, guidelines and then draw a, a, a line there at the, at the base of the cabinet to show where that begins. The next thing I want to do is on my islands. Now, granted, I have already sort of portioned out the dimensions here. These islands are, I believe, 42 inches wide. And then the length depends on, you know, where they sit uh, to, uh, relative to the rest of the room and also making sure that we have enough space between the cabinets. But this rounded edge that I'm creating for these islands is something that I want to do in a kitchen like this because it's a very large kitchen and you'll be moving around this kitchen a lot if you're working in it, uh, using it, and going around a, a 90 degree corner as you're cooking is harder to do than you if you have a soft rounded quarter and that's why I do that. Then I've gone in here and I'm going to start making more detail on these cabinets. These two end cabinets that are at the arched end of the room, I'm going to make those tall cabinets and you'll see later on what we do with that, but they will become functional for that for a good purpose of why they're being tall. Then uh, here at the end is where our refrigerators will go and I want to connect those cabinets together. And what will happen eventually is this part that I just pulled down will become a, an appliance garage. And I'll have one on each side. Again, what I'm doing is making things symmetrical and lined up. And that's what you want in traditional architecture is a lot of symmetry, a lot of balance. And that's what we're seeing here. So now that gives me some more form to work with. And you can see things are starting to balance out pretty nicely. 
I'm going to go around and select the very top of the cabinets and copy that plane and push it down 18 inches. So that gives me a height of seven and a half feet because the cabinets are drawn now at nine feet. The, the groin vault form is three feet tall. So I had 12 feet in total to work with as a ceiling height in this space. But we're going to let three feet of that you know, be taken up by our wonderful groin vault, which is so cool. Hmm. And then let's go back and start inserting some lines where we will have the cabinets divided. Now, keep in mind what I'm doing here is just getting a basic idea. I can always change this as you will see as we keep going. I will change things a little bit, but in general, I stick with this layout pretty closely through the end. The next thing I want to do here is if I start selecting the top of my cabinets, these will become the countertops. And if I select all of that and then group it, which I think I do here in just a second, a little slow. No, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do first actually is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to push those countertops down an inch and a half. Then I'm going to go back and uh, create the countertops, which I'm going to make an inch and a half thick because we want the, the edge of the countertop will be an inch and a half. The countertop material itself is usually three quarters of an inch in the United States. So I do that and there's something funny that happened here that I made a mistake that I caught later on. But what I had done is I pushed the cabinet countertop down instead of pulled it up because remember I had lowered the cabinet top to create the countertop group and then I pushed the countertop material down instead of pulling it back up that that's okay but that's what you do when you uh, can work with SketchUp you can make lots of mistakes but uh, fix them later or catch up you know later now I'm gonna go in here and clean up this model just a little bit let's get rid of those edges around those rounded corners that we were creating for our islands and then that gets us a little more further along and what forms we're working with I'm gonna eliminate some of those baselines there the base part of the cabinets that are just left over from pushing and pulling and making a, a toe kick. You see I have a, a four inch high toe kick at the base of all of these base cabinets as well as I have a toe kick for our island. I'll clean up the end corners of it later on. You'll see what we do with that. It's very very fun what we end up doing at the corner corners of those islands. I think you'll be uh, quite intrigued with how we work that out. But at this stage, I'm going to go and refer to a cabinet ma manufacturer, a very nice, uh, pretty high-end cabinet manufacturer, which is called Woodmode. I go to their website, and I've selected this traditional styled kitchen. And there are several reasons I chose their example to use this here. Because in this example that they have on their website, they have used two types of cabinet carcasses that you can have. One is called an inset and one is called an overlay. And the first one I'm going to create is the inset. So you see how you have this frame here. And if you look at this door example here, you'll see that there's a frame around the drawer and then around the door. Well, that's an inset. And the cabinet doors and drawers open out from that as opposed to where you wouldn't see the frame of the cabinet would be overlaid but which we will which we will do later on and I'll show you how what that looks like more later but the first thing we're going to do is create this inset cabinet frame and I've done that here I keep an even dimension around the edges I believe it's about a quarter of an inch I won't worry too much about dimensions in this because I did all of this in imperial dimensions and you may be working in metric and I don't want to confuse anyone. The idea here is to get an idea of how you do this and make these forms happen. Everyone has a little bit different dimensions that they work with around the world, different standards. If you're watching from someplace outside the United States, I don't want to go into too much why I'm using three quarters of an inch here or two and a half inches there. It's not that important. What's important is that we create these shapes and these forms to make these cabinets happen. Now, what I've done here 
is I am starting to create a profile that will be used to make this cabinet real. And I've studied the drawings from the Woodmode catalog and I've studied those pictures of the cabinet faces and I know that what it has is a bead around where the drawer starts. And then there's another, let's see here. Yeah, there's, a, there's sort of another curved shape or another bead really where the drawer begins. Now I'm going to leave a small gap. I believe it here is about a 16th of an inch, very small. And then I'm going to make another 180 around the edge of that. And that's going to give me the start of the, in this case, the drawer. And I've done that. And I'm going to make another line, a very short line. And that detail will go to the, you know, go horizontal uh, to make this work. And then we'll go down. And now I have some shape to work with. What I want to do where this corner is made or where this molding intersects that other molding, I'm going to make an arc. And I use circles to make it, as you can see. And then I go back and erase my construction lines, basically, is what I've done here. And so now I'm starting to get a profile for this cabinet detail. Then I come back, I go down, I don't know, what did I use, half an inch or so. The thickness of the door, again, don't worry too much about the dimensions at this point or at this stage, but I'm, I'm working with a thickness on my cabinet doors of three quarters of an inch just for reference. But see, now what I've done here is I have this shape that I can then take as a profile for that drawer. And what we'll do is we'll take our shape that's right there and we will make a component of that. And when you make a component out of something, you can then duplicate it very easily and even change your components. And if you change one component and it's exactly the same as another component that you have placed somewhere else, it will make a change there as well. So that's why I use that. And you'll see more and more how this works, but as we keep moving along, how this dynamic works in SketchUp. You don't have to be doing SketchUp to learn something here. You can be learning a lot about how cabinets are detailed, how they're put together, how you lay out a kitchen, and what sorts of things you'll be looking out for as you make your design. So, as I've said, I've created this profile for this drawer that we're going to have. Now, I'm also going to adjust a little bit here. If you go back to that cabinet door, you'll see there's like a small strip of wood that's sort of a spacer between the drawer and the door below it. So I'm adjusting a little bit to make this drawer the right size. And once I have that sort of formed out, just I just need a rectangle of it, right? What I've done is I've copied the outside edge of the rectangle. Then I go to my component, I click on it, and I do the follow me tool to create that drawer face. And there it is, just as easy as that. And you'll also see that I reverse the faces because I want the white to be on the outside in this case. Now we're going to do a very similar thing to the cabinet door that's below the drawer, right? You see that? So we come in here and we're going to do a similar thing. But the difference here is that, you know, we have our face frame of that's around the whole cabinet, but we have a frame around the door. There's an edge to the door. So we need to account for that. And it, once again, our bead is on the outside edge of that. So I'm gonna make a, another small indentation here to create that bead. I'm gonna go back and check a couple of dimensions and make sure I get this width or length of this piece of molding correct. I'm also going to show that face frame of the door itself there. Then make another component. Now, this is the component for the door of this cabinetry. And once we have that, we do a very similar thing that we did with the drawer. So let's copy that guy. Let's go over here. Let's push that back where it belongs on the face of that cabinet. 
choose that large rectangle that will be the door and select that outline and then select the cabinet profile that we created or the door profile that we created and then poof we have our door completed and detailed and you go around and what I'm doing here also is uh, cleaning up a little bit on the intricacies of the cabinet itself and making everything whole and and correct and I just noticed I have to adjust this thing I forgot to change that little line there it was going to be a little bit closer than I had it originally but you can see also what I'm doing here see this drawer there's that gap the drawer is inside of that beaded trim that's inside the frame of this cabinet face it's a little complicated, but you know, if you study this long enough, you'll figure this out and get used to what, seeing this, and you'll see this out in the real world, we'll, where there's these types of cabinets that they manufacture. So I've created now here, and we're going to stop this lesson here in just a minute, but you can see what I've done here is I've created a cabinet face that we're going to be working with and duplicating and manipulating our component elements to create the faces of our cabinets as we proceed with the design of this luxury super kitchen and this super mansion in Santa Barbara, California. So you see here, I'm just cleaning up some details and kind of straighten, tra straightening some things out to make it look right. And, you know, here and there, this is how you play with SketchUp. This is how SketchUp works. You, you, I just noticed that I have made that that, that face frame, I gave it a name, a component name, face frame. So that component, that face frame is a component. The door, the drawer front is a component. The door front is a component. And I'm going to rotate that and then pop it into place over here just to give you a feel for what we're going to do next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like.